Yeah, um, so you guys almost made it through the workshop. <laughs> Just one more presentation to uh, sit through, I guess. So basically, this is a bit of a wrap up, and I'm going to talk a bit about um, our future plans, um, what we are currently doing, what we are planning to do, and at the end, give a bit of a, of a workshop wrap up. So I will start with just the more direct near and medium term roadmap for Bro features we are working on, um, talk a bit about actually research projects at ICSI in Berkeley, and um, yeah, the wrap up. So first, the um, immediate future. Um, so we talked a lot about Bro 2.0. Don't forget, it's still a better version. So the final is still to come. And the timeline for that, we hope to have it out by early December. And I'm kind of listing here the things going into 2.0. We talked about most of them. I mean, the this, this scripts have been rewritten from scratch. We said that. We have the new logging system. Um, we have lots of infrastructure redone. We haven't really <laughs> talked about that. and. Um, but a lot of work went into a new build system, a packaging system. John did a, little, a lot of great work on that. Um, we have uh, Broxygen, which is, is uh, um, haven't talked about that either, but it's essentially a Doxygen for Bro scripts. And we have actually uh, hidden that a bit at the top of the agenda page. There's a link to um, a script reference, and that is Basically, all the bro scripts um, will in the future be automatically documented in the Doxygen way that comments are in there and they are taken out and you get this nice web uh, setup and, and web page um, framework to browse it and, and to understand what the scripts are doing. So this, this Broxygen itself is there and it works, and, but not all the code is yet commented and that is something um, we're actually planning to finish for 2.0 final to put a bit of pressure on the team here. <laughs> because I think that's, that's really important so that, um, as many of you have um, experienced during the workshop, getting an overview of what the scripts are doing and, and what are the options to tweak uh, is still a challenge. So, so this should be get, getting much better once this is in place. And we fixed lots of bugs. Um, we, we actually removed a lot of code which wasn't being used anymore by anybody or which hasn't been maintained anymore for a while already. Um, yeah, and a lot of new infrastructure, structure, including testing, uh, framework, our new web server, new mailing lists, and um, you guys have seen the new logo by now, right? <laughs> so what's next? Um, after that, so, so basically we are aiming for like a three to four months release cycle for new Bro versions. And this is kind of a tentative list for features in Bro 2.1. We really want a new user's guide, and I'm sure every one of you wants that too. So that is, is definitely a priority, basically a, a, a decent write-up of the, the major bro functionality, and um, we will work hard on that. The second kind of top priority for 2.1 is v6 support. Um, we have a bit of that. We have had it for a while, but it's really kind of fragile. It's not compiled in by default. Um, it's not really in, in any kind of deployment uh, state right now. So we will hard on the, work hard on that. Um, we will further extend the, the locking framework. Um, this is now, I haven't really mentioned that, I think, but, but basically while what you're currently seeing are these ASCII logs in this, this well-structured format, internally we have a, actually a plugin interface now where we can plug in different backends. So we can output different formats, and, and that is something we are going to extend in the future, we have already a prototype of, of doing binary logging, so it's just more, more space efficient um, and more more um, like uh, query efficient in the sense it's easier to kind of go through in bulk. Um, we will quite certainly add a Postgres uh, SQL interface. We have a patch for CouchDB support already in, in the tracker that was contributed by somebody. Um, and um, I'm personally hoping for a, uh, a SQLite interface as well. Internally, we're also going to th be threading the logging, logging framework. Currently, it's, it's all kind of part of the main process, which for I.O. is not that good. So we will be kind of putting all these, these um, um, I.O. intensive logging output into their own threads, which should um, remove some bottlenecks there. Um, we are working closely with the Ren Isaac guys on, on SIF integration. Um, I'm sure lots of you um, will find that useful. There will be um, what we kind of call a reaction framework in the sense that we give bro scripts an interface to, to um, exercise control over traffic in a unified form. So there are various approaches to that already for um, 
Um, Ashish and Jim talked about like uh, inserting ACLs into the router. So basically, we would like to have an interface to that so they can drop a host or can drop a host pair and, and, and have kind of a unified interface to whatever your hardware or your underlying setup can provide. Um, protocol analyzer is kind of an ongoing theme. So, so we have, um, um, or we, we already have kind of a, a basic syslog analyzer, and we're going to extend on that. Uh, grid FTP is planned. Um, we have better NFS, SMB, BitTorrent analyzers already in the queue, so that's going to get in. And um, we will be further extending our new test suite so that we can make sure in the future we won't introduce regressions as we add new stuff. So that's kind of the most concrete stuff at the moment. We have a number of more things in the queue or in planning at various stages. I'm going to touch a few more things to give you guys an idea on what kind of, I would say, medium term we are heading for. Um, we would like to really get to something like, like the CPAN for Perl or the PyPy for Python. Um, so make it really easy for you guys to contribute uh, scripts for everybody to use. And we see that in the form of providing a nice tool where you can easily just download tool from some central repository and install it into your bro and, and do the update and download all the dependencies and just the normal uh, yeah, CPAN functionality just for bro scripts. So that is CBAN, <laughs> working title. Um, a file analyzer. So, so um, files are transferred via lots of protocols, right? HTTP, SMTP. And um, I know many of you would really like to look deep and very deep into files to see what's in there in terms of contents. For example, to how about extracting a TAF file on the fly to see what's actually in there? So we will be adding infrastructure for that, um, protocol independent, so that basically you can write policies in terms of what content a file has and all the protocol analyzers, which, which kind of decode the data of a file, like the SMTP analyzer or the HTTP analyzer will feed data into that. So you get kind of a central point to work with files, and um, it works with all the protocols supporting that. Um, we are already working and have a prototype of an input framework, which is kind of the opposite of the logging framework. And I think this will expand Bro's functionality quite a bit. Um, basically, currently, it's really hard to get external data into Bro. Um, there, you, you can use Broccoli to send some stuff in, or you can kind of auto-generate scripts, but that's about it. Um, the input framework will allow you to, for example, take a database table or take just a flat file on disk and map that kind of transparently into script-level data structures so that um, it just shows up in a table and you can access that. And if the input side changes, like the file is updated or there's new data inserted into the database table, it will just, again, transparently show up at the script level. Um, this already works for flat files. So, so basically, Bro can, in our prototype, already read a log file it has written itself back into a table. So, so we already have the round trip there. Um, so this will make it a lot easier to, to integrate like blacklists, for example, in particular, and, and, and do that in real time, and if you want, in a streaming fashion. Um, the deep cluster, I think Seth has already mentioned this a bit. Basically, we would like to extend Bro control to um, manage more complex uh, cluster or um, a set of cluster setups in the sense that sometimes you don't have the simple stash setup where you have like a number of workers talking to the manager, but you actually have a number of subnets. And each subnet may have its own set of workers and its own kind of local manager for the guys operating there, but you still want to kind of build a kind of hierarchy to pass data up to a central system and perhaps even manage the configurations from the, from the central system, but then push it out to independent subnetworks and perhaps slightly different configurations based on subnetworks, something like that. And so this is what we call deep clustering, basically building a kind of a tiered, layered architecture of uh, bro control managed bro nodes, so to say. And I think that will be very powerful for, for many of these larger networks you guys are operating. Um, in terms of getting to the packets on the wire and in terms of exercising control over the packets on the wire, um, <laughs> currently there, there are a number of ways to do that, and they are all kind of not very well unified. Um, we heard about PF ring, and um, they're very OS-specific approaches to, to do various things like in-host load balancing, to uh, getting access to different packet sources, um, PCAP, there are vendor proprietary interfaces like DAC. Um, 
there are various ways. I mentioned the reaction framework earlier to, to exercise control. We would like to unify this all, kind of an, into an abstract layer for the scripting uh, interface and also for bro control. Basically, bro control taking care of a lot of these low level details, how to configure peer ring, for example, or how to um, talk to a certain device. And that is something we um, actually still need to kind of wrap our heads around ourselves how to structure this. But this is, um, I think, long term will be quite important to, to abstract the details there a bit. I already said we are always working on, on protocol analyzers in, in various forms. We are also working on a new version of the SpinPack protocol generator to um, give it more power, to make it more flexible, the, um, to just generally clean up the syntax for writing um, these grammars so that in the future it will actually be easier. To, to write new analyzers. And finally, and that is kind of a leftover from uh, 15 years of evolution, there's still lots of internal stuff we, we really need to clean up. Um, generally, um, we'd like to move more of Bro's code into a modular fashion so that it's easier to just add a new component here without touching like 50 files around the code base. Um, we did that for the logging framework from the beginning as we rewrote that, so it's easy to write a new plugin for the logging framework, and we would like to restructure other things in a similar form. So that's kind of the, the, the a rough feature list of um, things to expect in, in the future, um, some sooner, some later. The next thing I wanted to talk about is a number of research projects going on at ICSI um, in Berkeley. And this is a bit in the spirit so, so we are moving Bro more into operations. We want to put really a focus on, on operational deployment, but that doesn't mean we are going to stop the research. <laughs> and as we um, have said already, basically a lot of the functionality currently in Bro is coming out of research projects, and we want to follow um, that spirit in the future as well. And um, I'm going to talk about three things which I hope at some point will appear in Bro, just as much of the previous research is now part of the operational Bro. Um, installation. The first is something um, we already heard from LBL, um, that the 100 gigabit links are coming. And this is actually the um, um, ESnet network they are currently building um, to connect initially the, the, the NERSC in Berkeley, the supercomputer center, and Argonne National Labs in Oak Ridge. And actually, I wanted, instead of showing this, I wanted to show the live view of ESnet's network. So this is the live view of active 100 gig links in the ESnet backbone. So they are just setting that up. It's not production yet. But they are setting it act actually up for supercomputing up there, which starts on Saturday, I think, right? <laughs> um, so and it's essentially, so they, I think end of October, they, they um, took the first transcontinental 100 gig link into operation, and I kind of since then have connected supercomputed, the supercomputing side. Um, and the problem here from the perspective of the individual sites is that now they are getting these 100 gig links, and they need to monitor it, right? So, so we are kind of want to provide them with a monitoring solution, particularly to the Bro installations like NERSC, who have been using Bro for a long time, and they need to monitor now 100 gig links with Bro. So let me go back to my slide. Um, so the Department of Energy, um, as the one funding all these 100 gig links, they uh, anticipated that there might be a need for doing 100 gig monitoring. And about, I guess, one and a half years ago, they put out a solicitation for actually building a 100 gig load balancer, just in the sense, um, like these C-packet devices we have seen um, in the previous presentation, which do the load balancing um, across a cluster. But in this case, we want to do it for 100 gig. And um, they, the DOE put out a solicitation for that and was actually just awarded a grant to um, a group of, of C-packet and um, us in Berkeley and NERSC to build a prototype of this uh, component. And the thing we will be doing here is it's a bit like um, the current C-Packet device, um, in the sense there's a 100 gig stream will be coming in and will be load balanced across a set of 10 output stream, 10 gig output streams, and then they will be forwarded to a bro cluster. Um, in the same form we do are currently at, we are currently doing at 10 gig. The one interesting piece here, and that is kind of the research part for our end, is that we will provide this 100 gig load balancer with an API to be controlled by Bro 
um, to shed the load in certain conditions or in certain under certain conditions. So if, for example, in these, these supercomputer environments, there are all these huge file transfers, and, and most of that is pretty uninteresting from an, from an IDS perspective. So the load balancer will have an interface to actually drop stuff um, basically based on decisions the row cluster is taking. You still need to figure out how, how this, a, this APA actually looks like, but um, the time frame for this is, is one to two years, and at that point, we want to have a working 100 gig load balancer prototype, um, and that will be deployed at NERSC for the initial installation, or for the initial testing and, and evaluation. Um, Seth mentioned the uh, not problem that uh, <laughs> <laughs> Bo is still single-threaded. <laughs> um, it's, no, no, you, want, you wanted to say it differently now, right? <laughs> um, I mean, the, the, so, so, so Seth into, said that already. Basically, the cluster does lever, can, can leverage the, the, the capabilities of multi-core systems, but it's still in the sense, in the sense that we have separate processes running there, which introduces a number of, of limitations. And one of them is just latency. I mean, it just takes more time to send data between processes because um, Bro's communication protocol is actually pretty complex internally. Um, so we would like to couple these various analysis threads much more closely and that's why we really want to do this multi-threading at least long term. And we want to do it in a way that it scales well with um, increasing number of cores and also in a way that it's uh, transparent to the person operating bro. So we don't want the person operating bro to tell how to structure uh, the analysis so that it parallelizes well. Um, multi-threading in IDS, uh, I, I would say for some IDSs it's not that hard. So if you look at the typical pattern matching um, IDS like, like Snow or Suricata, it's they are doing their work mostly on a flow basis. So if you can, can uh, distribute the traffic internally to threads based on flows, at least conceptually, that is pretty straightforward and should scale very, very well. Um, on a technical side, there are tons of issues, of course, but, but like just conceptually. For Bro, it's actually pretty hard, even conceptually, because if you think about this, this, this layered architecture I introduced earlier, um, currently, basically, these two layers that is a single thread. So and what we could do is we could basically spawn a number of threads over here in the event engine level and spawn a number of threads over here. But the question is, how do we then distribute the load, actually, or the work, actually, across these threads? Down here, that is actually not that difficult. It's kind of a cluster in a box in the sense that there we can still do this flow-based flow load balancing, just as Snort or Suricata can quite easily do. Um, the tricky part for Bro, and that is the major difference, is basically this upper layer here. So we have this, this Turing compute scripting language. I mean, how do we kind of transparently and automatically parallelize a scripting language? Um, whole languages have been invented to be kind of easily parallelizable, and I don't think Vern uh, thought about parallelizing uh, in 1995. So that's kind of tricky. Um, however, it turns out, if you look at the scripts um, that people use with Bro normally. Um, if you look closely at, uh, at them, you see that analysis is certainly uh, is, is usually structured in a certain way. So they are usually it's done per their stuff done per connection. They are done per uh, stuff done per per source IP address. So there's there's some kind of very in, intrinsic structure to how people um, write their scripts, and that is something um, we believe we can exploit. And I'm not going to talk more about that, but we do have a very early prototype of a, of a multi-thread bro, um, which kind of at least demonstrates that this approach can work. Um, the knowledge from this prototype actually kind of moves into a current project, which is a bit more broad. Um, we are working on kind of a, a, a virtual machine for network traffic analysis. And it's a bit like, think it's, it's a Java VM for network traffic analysis, something like a rather high-level assembler. Ooh. <laughs> 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 um, like a high-level assembler, um, but with the right kind of instructions and data types for network traffic analysis. So you have a hash table right there. You have IP addresses as a built-in data type at that level. And it's an intermediary level. It's nothing a user would interact with directly, but we can put a lot of knowledge into this layer. So, um, and once we have an analysis or, or some, 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 some logic expressed in this layer, we can compile it into native code. And that is what we are currently working on. Um, 
And it actually has two immediate applications to grow. One is that we can take this um, new intermediary layer and take a bro script and compile it into this layer, and then from there compile it into native code. And that gets us away from the current bottleneck of script execution. Bro is still interpreting all these scripts to give it to it. And we have profiled the performance of the system. And actually, um, in complex setups, a lot of time is spent just in interpreting these scripts, not actually in analyzing packets. So that is something which, which we really hope this will, will give us. And in addition, we can introduce the concurrency model here at this level. So that makes it a lot easier to parallelize analysis rather than manually um, um, dealing with all the low-level C code, which uh, has lots of static variables and stuff. So um, I'm actually not going through all of that. I wasn't planning on that. But the point is basically we built the concurrency model in right here. In right here. And um, we actually plan to use this as a new backend for the, for the bin pack protocol parser generator, which currently generates C++ code. In the future, we will compile um, network protocol grammars into this system and then combine it, actually, at compile and link time with bro script codes. And then we can optimize things across this whole chain. So that's a kind of a lot of stuff for a few minutes. So I just wanted to put that out there. Um, that is, is um, something we are working on. So that already um, summarizes my, my, my research overview. And the last thing for me to do is wrapping up the workshop a bit. And I want to really thank everybody here for, for coming. Um, it's really great to see this rather large group of uh, Bro users here. And, and as I said and at the beginning, it's clearly the largest group of Bro users in the single room uh, I've ever seen and I think we ever had. <laughs> I would also like to thank the National Science Foundation actually for subsidizing workshop attendance here. So I've heard people wondering how we can afford the good food and the marks with just $50 uh, attendance fees. So that is thanks to NSF who actually are paying part of the costs here. So that is uh, much appreciated. And the goal of the National Science Foundation and also of us, of course, is that um, workshops like these basically um, help to build a larger community. Um, and that, that aims both for, for users in the sense of we just want people to use Bro and um, then start exchanging experiences and functionality with each other. So that basically, it's not just like this one-way street we often had in the past from, from us to, to, to give you guys functionality. It would be really cool if, if, if you guys started to share with each other whatever you, you do with Bro and, and whatever scripts you write, for example. But also on the developer side. So I mean, we, we are a rather small team. There's only so much we can do. So we are really hoping that, that more people start to contribute functionality to the core of the system. Um, that at some point, the development will be less dependent on this core team in, in Berkeley and, and here at NCSA. And, and more people will contribute in the open source sense. So where um, it's kind of the work is kind of laying on a, on a lot of shoulders. <laughs> To that end, we have set a number of up. Uh, we have set up many new community resources. I'm sure you guys have seen that. Basically, if you go to our web page, you will find um, mailing lists for users, for development, for commit notifications. We have a new blog. Um, we have a Twitter account. There's an IRC channel, and we have this this contributed scripts repository where we are currently we are just we want to collect functionality and eventually, and this will turn into this this the CPAN style. Uh, um, community repository I talked about earlier. But this is the start for now. And for the contribution, so we have, uh, I, I want to say that explicitly, we have made the explicit de decision to, to switch to an open development model. So in the past, I think it was kind of often, uh, to many probably appeared that everything happens behind closed doors uh, in, in terms of pro development, and it did. So, um, but now we have opened up everything. The, the, the Git repositories are open. The development mailing list is open. Um, we used the issue tracker extensively. So we have had the tracker for, for a long time, um, but we were, quite frankly, not using it consistently. So that has changed. Our team is larger. We, we just need to use the tracker. Otherwise, we can't coordinate ourselves. Um, and that, I think, benefits everybody, because you can file tickets, and you can also just follow how things are progressing. So um, building a community, how can you directly help the Bro project if you're feel inclined to do so. So the, one, the very first thing is actually just tell us that you are using Bro. That by itself is very helpful. Tell us a bit about your installation, about your network, what you're doing. And the main reason here is that, first of all, of course, it's interesting for us. And we want to know and we want to adapt whatever we do to, to your needs. 
but it also allows us to go back to our funders and tell them people are using Bro. And that is, I mean, that's the National Science Foundation. Their goal is um, to help the, in particular, of course, their educational um, community to, to get better tools. And if we can tell them, look, here, these guys are using it, and they are, they're having an extra benefit by, by deploying Bro, that is a very strong argument in favor of what we are doing. Then tell others that you're using Bro, and that is basically spread the word what the system can do and what you, you can do with it. Help others to use it. If um, we know the documentation is still uh, lacking, we are working on that. But in the meantime, um, please, if anybody has questions, um, try to help. And finally, I said that earlier, contribute to the development, um, because that's uh, what will move us forward in the long term. Um, that brings me to my <laughs> shameless plug. So we already said that basically all of this Bro, Bro 2.0 work was only possible during the last year, thanks to the funding from the National Science Foundation. So and that is really generous funding. Um, and it will last a bit longer, but only for so long. And we have many more ideas what to do. Just ask, ask Seth, yes. <laughs> he has ideas for like 20 years, I guess. <laughs> um, so to continue this work, um, we are looking for more funding, quite, quite frankly. And um, that will first allow us to keep the team together as it currently is, um, beyond the time frame of this NSF grant. But it will also allow us um, to potentially expand the team further to do more things more quickly. And um, I think the, 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 the quicker we can, can work on some of this stuff, um, the better, because it's, there are still some, some crucial things missing. So if you have any ideas, let us know. Um, any, any thoughts are appreciated in this context. Yeah, thanks for coming here again, the, the like, various ways to, to reach us. You see that on the homepage as well. And the, the team on the right-hand side. And I would really like to thank everybody for uh, organizing this workshop. So they all helped a lot um, preparing the material. There was a lot of work. I think it went pretty well. So I, I think it paid off investing this work. But thanks to everybody in particular. Um, Adam has organized all the local logistics here. So um, and um, that, I think it worked really well. Everything was really smooth. So thanks, Adam. <laughs> <laughs>